tuberculosis, anthrax, and vultures' gastric juices are specifically adapted to neutralize all that dangerous bacteria. If you look over to the right, you might see the rear ends of a bunch of red river hogs. Yeah, they're kind of uh, rooting around over there. They might have some food up there. A lot of times they're messing around over here a little closer to the road. But we got to see their bums. Hey folks, in Africa there are over 70 species of antelope, but only one species of deer. So anything out here that you might want to call a deer, I wouldn't bother. I'd just go ahead and guess that it's some kind of antelope, and you'd be correct. And you know, of those 70 species of antelope, you can generally categorize them as either horse-like antelope or cattle like antelope. These beautiful chestnut brown antelope to our left with the black and white markings on their face, those are the sable antelope. They're some of my very favorite. You know, sable antelope are some of the lion's favorite entree items on the menu. And the word sable actually refers to that particular color of brown that their coat is. Well, those sable antelope are a perfect example of the horse-like antelope. You see, they're very lean and limber and graceful. And when they run, they're very fast and agile. They can turn fast corners. Horse-like antelope rely on their speed and agility to get them out of a jam. Cattle-like antelope have to rely on their strength and their size and the size of their herd. Up to the left, we're seeing some of our iconic Maasai giraffe. All the giraffe in this valley are Maasai giraffe, and Maasai are the largest of the giraffe species. Now these two fellows, you can tell they're males, and you know there's an easy way to tell if the giraffe is male or not when you see them feeding. Only males turn their entire head upward to eat. Females will keep their heads at a right angle when they're feeding from the tree. Notice what they're doing with their tongues. Did you know a giraffe has one inch of tongue for every foot of height? So an 18 foot tall giraffe has an 18 inch long tongue. What do you do with a tongue like that? Well, you reach up into the trees and grab a branch with it and pull it down closer to your mouth. That's a terrific thing to do with a tongue like that. These Maasai giraffes, the males, can easily be over 18 feet tall. That's right, they can walk right up to your second floor bedroom window and look in without even standing on their tiptoes. Oh, but wait, they actually are standing on their tiptoes already. You see, all hooved animals are actually walking on their toenails. How about this beautiful lavender colored antelope to our left with those long, sharp, straight horns and those beautiful black and white markings? That's the South African oryx. Oryx is another word for antelope, but you know, we also refer to these guys by their African name of the gimsbok. Very formidable antelope. You don't want to get anywhere near the business end of those horns. They are arguably the sharpest horns in the animal kingdom. Of course, antelopes have horns, cows have horns, deer, on the other hand, have antlers. You know, horns are permanent. They, ne they grow the entire life of the animal, and they never fall off. But if they get broken off, they'll never grow back. Of course, we know deer, on the other hand, their antlers are temporary. They fall off every year, and they have to be regrown every single year. Well, here's some more of our Maasai giraffe, and they are visiting mom. Did I mention we have a brand new baby Maasai giraffe over here in the South Valley? There she is. She's less than 10 days old. And you know, a baby giraffe is six feet tall at birth and weighs over 200 pounds. They have to fall six feet to the ground when they're born. What a beautiful little Maasai giraffe. They've just named her, and I'm not sure if her name is either Tamaza or Zama. So they wrote it in a book, starts with a T, has a Z and an A and an M and an A in it. What a beautiful little animal. You know,
know, um, and as I mentioned, the side giraffes are the largest of the giraffes. But they live in eastern Kenya, in Africa. Ooh, look at those antelope on the other hill across from us, this huge man antelope. Those are the largest antelope in the world. They are These particular ones are the Patterson zebra. And we also have some down in the African woods that you can walk to that are giant elands. They're even a little bit larger than those guys. You know, those elands are the perfect example of the cattle like antelope. Well, speaking of cattle, you're probably noticing that big black brown buffalo down there. That is the African Cape Buffalo. It is the second most dangerous animal to man in Africa. Second only to the hippo. And they're dangerous for the same reason. They're really grumpy. That's right, if you make one of them mad, you're bound to meet the entire mob. And that's just what they'll do. They'll mob right up on you. You know, we even call a herd of buffaloes a mob. But it's that mob mentality that allows them to protect their young so effectively. Well, what do you suppose African animals have to protect their young from? Who are the major predators in Africa? Tribes of lions, packs of hyenas and wild dogs, cheetahs and leopards. Those are the main predators in Africa. Of course, crocodiles fill the rivers and waterways. And there are many other smaller predators. But most of these antelope and most of these um, ungulates that we have on exhibit are preyed on by the lions, hyenas, wild dogs, cheetahs. And the forest dwellers are preyed on by the leopards. You know, leopards like to hang out in the forest. They're not so much for the open savanna. Well, if you look down to the left, there's a lot of two-legged critters down there in that exhibit. Having some fun. Those are our animal keepers, folks. And you know what? Every animal in our exhibits are counted and accounted for every day by their keepers. And if they notice an animal needs a little extra special care or attention, we're able to put one of those animals into our care corral and give it all the extra special attention it needs. Across from us you'll see a small orange antelope. Those are the Ugandan KOB. And that's another African word for, well, an antelope-like creature. And they're mingling over there with, uh, you see the taller gray antelope with the white stripes? Those are the greater kudu. Here's some more of those Ugandan cob. What a beautiful animal, those beautiful orange coats. and just let you soak in the awesomeness of the Southern Valley. If you're looking off to the left, you're looking across about 150 acres of open rangeland. And you know what? Animals need space. Space to run and jump and hide and play and love and live and explore and just do all those things that they do naturally. And you know, folks, those are the very words of our founder, Dr. Charles Schroeder. You know, Dr. Schroeder was the director of the Balboa Park Zoo. And as long ago as 1959, Dr. Schroeder had a realization